Once again, I thank you for your responses. And as we take a break from hearing from you, please remember, you still have one more 20 minute section in which to have your say, reasoning on politics. I will now perform the third and final poem from Political Charlogy called Coalition Government. I wrote it on November 1, 2000, almost one year before I even knew I would be coming to live in Westmoreland. The poem gives a possible solution to the political solution problem that has faced Jamaica over the years. Again, please listen very carefully. Again, let us examine the keyword. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, independent is defined as being free from outside control, not subject to another's authority, and of a country self governing. Correlation is defined as a temporary alliance, especially of political parties forming a government. And remember that, as we said earlier, government is defined as the group of people who govern a state and also as the system by which a state, organization, or community is governed. We can therefore say, independent coalition government is a system free from outside control and not subject to another's authority by which a state is governed that has a temporary alliance, especially of political parties. The poem, Coalition Government, speaks of some of the policies that I agree with and will speak up for. I am sure some of you may also agree with these policies and also have policies of your own that you would like to see put into action but you may not have anyone that is an elected politician who is in a position to do so, who will listen to you. Sadly, in Jamaica, it is usually the policies of the political party in government 
that are implemented even at the expense of the country at large. However, if enough independent candidates are elected, which stops either of the two parties from getting a clear majority, then a coalition government will need to be formed to ensure we have a government. At present, there are 63 constituencies, each with a seat in the House of Representatives. What do you think would happen if an independent candidate is elected and the two major parties each have 31 candidates elected, making it a 1 to 31 to 31 way split? No party could then claim a majority. It would mean that each would either try to get the independent MP on their side, or they would try to get members of the other party on their side to get a majority and form the government. Imagine that. What a judgment. My argument is this. By freeing ourselves totally from the British monarchy, we can establish a constitution that will allow all our elected representatives to form the government without any being classified as opposition. We do not need an opposition in Parliament. What we need is a coalition government where all elected members work together for the good of the country and its citizens. This is one reason why voting for an independent candidate will be beneficial. Another reason is that for those who are tired of the antics of the two parties, they will have an alternative to make their voices heard. And another point, some people tell me that if I, an independent candidate, get elected, I will become corrupt and forget about good governance. I refer to such statements as defeatist mentality, meaning that the person is defeating themselves with their own thinking. Are we to think that there are no Jamaicans who are capable of governing the country in equality and justice with true respect for all? Some even ask, what can an independent representative, councillor or member of parliament, MP, achieve if he or she is in the minority in government? Firstly, that councillor or MP must be paid. Secondly, that councillor or MP must get for his or her constituents all the financial allocations for their division or constituency authorized by Parliament. Thirdly, that councillor or MP can sue in court the relevant of persons or institutions, ministers or the government as a whole, for not paying them and or for not providing all the financial allocations due to their division or constituency. Simply put, councillors and MPs are elected by the people to represent them without fear or favour. They must be given the necessary and designated tools, example money, with which to do so. There is no longer any place for corrupt party politics in the administration of Jamaica land we know law. Now almost halfway through the second decade of the 21st century, 2015. We must ensure this by voting for proper representation that will advance the welfare of Jamaica. Another policy mentioned in the poem is reparation. This means compensation for a wrong done, meaning in this case that European countries that participated in slavery and the slave trade must compensate those of us whose four parents were enslaved. This includes making apologies and paying money. Consider this. According to Messrs. F.R. Auger, A.S.C. Garden, D.G. Hall, and M. Record in their 1960 book, The Making of the West Indies, the Spanish brought Africans to the West Indies as slaves as early as 1510, while the French, in 1830, were the last to end the slave trade. The English participated in the slave trade from 1651 to 1808, while Denmark, Holland, and Sweden also traded in Africans as slaves. They further state on page 67, and I quote, It is thought 
that during the whole European slave trade, a quarter of which was concentrated on the West Indies, no less than 20 million Africans were sold out of Africa. End of quote. 20 million Africans sold out of Africa. On page 90 of the 1971 book, A Pre-Emancipation History of the West Indies by Dr. Isaac Dukan, we read that the British Parliament passed the Emancipation Act that came into effect on August 1, 1834, that abolished slavery, but with the provision that, and I quote, slave owners were to be compensated for the loss of their property in slaves, and a grant of 20 million pounds was allocated by the British government for this process, for this purpose. 20 million pounds, 20 million Africans. It is estimated that 651,915 Africans were enslaved in the British West Indies at the time of emancipation on August 1, 1834. But none of them received any compensation for work they or their four parents did. Not to mention the atrocities of killing them. This is a shame on England and an injustice that must be cor corrected. We are now at the third and final section for audience response, which will last 20 minutes. I may sound like a record that keeps skipping back to the previous section of the group, but I must repeat again, I shall not be held accountable for anything you may say, as what you say will be totally your doing and not mine. Once again, I thank you for your responses, but please stay another few minutes as we bring a fitting end to this event, Reasoning on Politics. In closing, we must always be thankful for the goodness of our Creator, and a good way of doing so is to respect ourselves and respect others as well, every time. The last word in this, our reasoning on politics, comes as a question from national hero, the right excellent Marcus Messiah Garvey, who said, Where can we find in this race of ours men who truly know themselves? I will say it another way. Where can we find in this country of ours, Jamaica, men and women who truly know themselves? I am one of those who have positively answered that question which is why I was an independent candidate in the 2012 local government elections and why I plan to be one again in the next elections, local government or parliamentary. If you share this view and want to volunteer to help me get the message to those on the voters list for the White House Division and the Westman and Eastern constituency who are not here, then you may text your name, address and telephone number to me at 865-4240 or email me at h-a-i-l-e-m-i okay once again I thank you for your responses but please stay another few minutes as we bring a fitting end to this event reasoning on politics in closing we must always be thankful for the goodness of our creator and a good way of doing so is to respect ourselves and respect others as well, every time. The last word in this, our reasoning on politics, comes as a question from national hero, the right excellent Marcus Messiah Garvey, who said, Where can we find in this race of ours men who truly know themselves? I will say it another way. Where can we find in this country of ours, Jamaica, men and women who truly know themselves. I am one of those who have positively answered that question, which is why I was an independent candidate in the 2012 local government elections and why I plan to be one again in the next elections, local government or parliamentary. If you share this view and want to volunteer to help me get the message to those on the voters list for the White House Division and Westmoreland Eastern constituency who are not here, then you may text your name, address, and telephone number to me at 865-4240 or email me at h-a-i-l-e 
M I K A E L one at gmail dot com. That's Haile Mikhail one at gmail dot com. I will then get in touch with you, and together with the other volunteers, we will ensure the voters of the White House Division and Westmoreland Eastern constituency know what to do on election day so as to get proper representation. Remember, your vote is your right, so please use it wisely. Also, if you are a member of a church group, a school's PTA, a youth or community club, a service club, or any other group or organization, and you want me to share this message with your other members, please let me know and I will make arrangements to do so, even if you live outside of Westmoreland.